if y'all yeah. don't know, Jimmy yeah. and Alyssa okay. are some of our friends from the core group, some of our family from the core group. I'll put it that way, y'all. These people are amazing. Um, their heart for God is so amazing. Wow. Their purity is so amazing. And they're going to come on here today and talk about how God has restored their marriage, about their testimony, what God has done in each of them to bring their marriage to the place it is today. I don't know about y'all, my marriage, I've never thought it could be this good. Like, real, real, I, like it wasn't that long ago nah. my wife didn't want to <laughs> look at me in the eyes and saying, I love you. But like a year ago, you know, a year and a half ago, yesterday, mm -hmm. we were kissing on each other in the kitchen around the island table. I mean, it's just, come on, y'all. We're about to be in a marriage retreat called oh, the Garden oh. of Eden in a few weeks. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, <laughs> how do you think all these babies are running around? So, anyways, um, you guys are just so amazing. I can't say enough oh. about you guys. Um, let me do a little preliminary thing, a few preliminary things, and then we'll jump into y'all's testimony. You guys just take the floor. Um, and everything and share uh, however y'all are, are led by the Holy Spirit to share. Uh, number one, if you're on this, guys, please, we want as many people to hear this testimony. <clears throat> Excuse me. We want as many people to hear this testimony as possible. The word says, <clears throat> by the blood of the lamb, what Jesus has done for us and the word of our testimony, the evidence of what he's done for us in our lives, that, <clears throat> that we overcome. So we want people to hear testimonies of marriages being restored. Yo, God is after marriages. He's after restoring your marriage. He restored my marriage. I'm a living testimony of a restored marriage. Let me tell you something. This marriage was a miracle that it ever came to be the way it was today. We were headed towards separation, towards divorce, towards adultery, towards every bit of it. And God restored our marriage. He restored my heart. I, couldn't, I was a man who could not feel my emotions. Instead of showing my emotions, I showed a wall. There's so, so many men out there. You're so broken. You're so hurting. Wow. You're so damaged that you cannot even show your wife who you love. You love, I know you love your wife, but you cannot show her your emotions. And some of you wow. women are so damaged, you can't show your husband your real emotions because you have such a wall up because of so many things that happened to you. Some of it was adulthood trauma, childhood trauma, teenage trauma. I don't know where it came in for you. Some of it was trauma that happened before you ever born. I promise you some of you are getting delivered towards the end of this. There's deliverance and there's inner healing that needs to happen. Mm. And those are both the problems process it's very hard you know when the bible says in matthew i think it's chapter 9 or 19 it says what god has brought together let no man separate there's a lot of distance between the end of the word separate in the period at the end of that sentence that distance is the process that we go through to say yes to that statement that jesus made it is not easy marriage is not easy but let me tell you something it's like a treasure the kingdom marriage is god's picture of kingdom in a kingdom is like a treasure hidden in a field that a man went and found yeah. in his joy. He went away and sold everything to go back oh. and buy the field so he could have the treasure in the field. He didn't buy the field for the field. He could have bought any field he wanted. He bought the field with the treasure hidden in it. It looks like wow. this world is telling people, get divorced, cheat. There's apps out there about cheating on your spouse, about having adultery and all this stuff and that. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> get the treasure. It looks like foolishness to the world. Fighting for your marriage. People are even, there's some of you, people are speaking in their ear, telling you, you need to just leave her. You need to leave him. He's no good. She's no good. It'll never work out. Da, 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 da. I went through three marriages. It never works out. Let me tell you the common denominator with everyone who's in your ear giving you negative information. They are the common denominator in every marriage and every equation they've ever been in. So you know who needs to get advice is them. They don't need to be given advice. They need to receive advice. Yeah. Probably from this live right here. So get that negative talk out of your mm -hmm. ear. Let me wow. When I counsel That's... somebody on marriage, <clears throat> I'm not for them. I'm not on their side. Yeah. I'm not on their wife's side. I'm on the side of you guys. Both of you together. I'm on the side of your marriage. <clears throat> so share this wow. with somebody. Right. I'm yes, somebody, That's somebody's so marriage is depending on this. And I'm not trying that to go on and so preach right here because you guys are about to bring the fire Amen. back and see it all over you and stir it up. But let me tell you something. Somebody's no. marriage is depending on this. This is not just to get shares. That's this isn't just to get likes. Perfect. We do all this for free. Come on. I'm taking time away from work right now to do this, guys. You know why? Because I think your marriage yeah. is worth it. I, th I think your marriage is worth it. So it's worth the healing. So Amen. Take time That's to tag three people. Please share this, share this, share this. Let's get as many people on here as we can watching this as possible. This will be posted to YouTube. 
as well as Facebook. Um, it will be posted to the Refuge page. Hey, Nikki, how are you guys doing? That's another amazing marriages, uh, marriage. Some people I went to Bible school with, Nikki Palacios and Jonathan Palacios. We love you guys so much. Thank you for being on this. Please share and like this. Uh, we're going to pray. <clears throat> Jimmy, why don't you pray, and then you guys get started as the Holy Spirit uh, leads you to talk about your testimony and how God healed each of you in your marriage. All right? Go ahead, my brother. Yes, Lord. Father God, we just thank you for this wonderful time. Lord, we give you all the praise and the glory. And we give uh, Landon and Krista and the refuge even just honoring, Lord. Yes. We thank you that they are taking time away from their life to even bring us up. And that this is not a platform, Lord, we are seeking and praying and believing for restored marriages, biblical marriages. <clears throat> we pray over the connection. We pray over everyone that will join and that everyone who will watch it later on on the yes. replay, Lord, will you just touch them in a new way? Yes, Lord. Will you touch their marriage? Will you remove all of the distractions from their life? Yes. Negative words and yes. word curses Lord. and thoughts and actions in their marriage. Oh, we stand for biblical marriage. Yes. Because we are awaiting the marriage to our bridegroom, which is Jesus Christ. Yes. So, Father, let us represent heaven in our marriages, <clears throat> in our homes, and everything that we do, may everything represent you. We give you the honor, Amen. the glory, and the praise. One more thing. In Jesus' Is mighty name, give honor Amen. As well to Jenny and Stephen Amen. Weaver, who connected us through the core group. Y'all, that core group has changed our lives. It changed yeah. my life. When Chris yeah. started the core group, I was as lukewarm as it gets. Didn't care oh. about nothing. Man. Oh, Quartz and Jenny Weaver. Is that all we hear in our house with Jenny Weaver? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Now that's all I listen to. Jenny and Steven, all their stuff, jumping on their stuff, everything. Like, get, can't get enough. And uh, <clears throat> go ahead, guys. I love y'all. Go ahead. I'm going to be quiet. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, yes, and also we want to give honor to Ian and Jacynthia Bailey, who also take care of poor marriages. They've been pouring into so many marriages and so many people's lives, and we can't forget them. Yeah. So, yes, in our marriage, we were two broken people, and we came together thinking marriage was going to solve everything. We thought it was this was the fairy tale ending. We thought this was nice. Everything's going to be good. My life's going to get back together. So we first met, and we were just of the world. And I'm telling you, we dated, and we were... We were very lustful to each other. Yeah. Um, that was like the number one priority. It was all about self-pleasure um, and us against the world mentality yeah. and sex outside of marriage. It was rampant. It was rampant. Um, we did things in public sexually. Mm -hmm. We did things in the in, in public, like hiding mm -hmm. away, like in like the mall, like, you know, changing. Like I will because these are things that people yeah. really need to know. We were watching pornography together, mm -hmm. um, masturbating on each side of the rooms or whatever. Like he would, you know, we would, what would they call it? Sex texting or and, whatever that thing yeah, is. We, we would were, go back and forth. Yeah. We were so corrupted in that lust sexual mm -hmm. activity. It was every time we would meet, I would skip school to do that, to go yeah. ahead and do that. Um, he would, it, it was just like a demonized type of situation where we were so strongly pulled by our, the, the hormones, but it was like, yeah. it was, it was not a healthy thing at all. It was straight up a demon. Um, it, it, we, we, um, were so rebellious mm -hmm. to our family. Um, we had so much anger and hate if we didn't fulfill what we wanted to do with each other it was so bad to the point where i got so unfulfilled to what i had that i was date like messing with other guys while coming back to him and doing the same thing but yeah. he <clears throat> thought that that was okay like he was yeah. he was hurt but at the same time he, me he blamed that so that's how toxic it was we went back and forth but this was when, when did we meet in my senior year and his uh, first year of college, right? So right around uh, 2010 was when we met. Yeah. And the next three years was everything we just described. Yeah. It was this youthful, rebellious, 
we know better prideful mentality and it was forget everything else it was it was all about lust it was all about pride it was all about having fun and we had no idea what we were doing no we didn't we thought it was, it was okay <laughs> that was okay so 20 2015 uh actually the end of 2013 right before um, she was getting ready to go somewhere um, that she shared in her testimony before she was about to go to a club to do drugs mm -hmm. and she felt something to take a pregnancy test mm -hmm. and she's pregnant yeah. and we get married in March and we're we're expecting mm -hmm. and we're still not, not really fully there yet we're married in March and we have our son in August of 2014 and this is where all of those problems that we had when we were teenagers just got swept under the rug they really got brought forward so the first three months after Jeremy was born I struggled right. heavily with pornography it was chronic <clears throat> it was that stuff doesn't just go away when you get was married man a deep dark sin yeah, so when, while yeah. I had a child, um, I'm so attached to this baby that I, I didn't want any sexual relations with him because, as you know, as a woman, when you have a child and you breastfeed, there is, your hormones levels are down. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't want to do any of that. Mm -hmm. And I just got a C-section, a cesarean. So I'm, I'm trying to recover. Meanwhile, he is in this drive. Um, so we don't have any interactions for almost six months. Um, and then during that six months, I didn't know that he relied on other things than of me. Um, when I, when we got into the marriage, I committed my life to him. And I said, I would never do anything against outside of my, our marriage. Like I, I am fully committed when it comes to marriage. So I stopped right. looking elsewhere, men and things like that, you know. Um, but there was one very huge thing that happened in our lives was where, where um, so we didn't know Jesus uh, before marriage, but I ended up having this pivotal moment in my life where I tried to commit suicide. Um, I was with another man at that time and wasn't faithful like you know with in, in the relationship and then i went to this man this man was domestically like abusing me and then um i didn't feel fulfillment in the sexual drive so i wanted to go to this man but he was abusive he was very controlling, controlling and um, it was scary it was scary so i got to a point in that relationship, I said, no, I, I, I can't do this. And I asked him, can I come back? Mm. This is during our dating period. I said, can I come back? And he actually, he did not know his no would result to me in a psychiatric hospital. So I ended up in a psychiatric hospital and I called him from there. And I, I well, he was in the hospital um, before I went <clears throat> to the hospital. I was, I was in the ER, he was there. Mm -hmm. because it's so much it was traumatic that, that I'm still feeling from that but he remembers um as a doctor no can you can you please keep wow. her she, she's not crazy you know she's not suicidal I'll go I'll take wow. her home because I called him to help me you know and he, he was able to um communicate to the doctors but they said no yeah. she has to be admitted because she tried to so I was admitted there he was calling me um, from the hospital right. you know taking care of me but this man was looking for me so I had a man and say no we're cutting it off we're done then when I came out me and Jimmy took our that's when our relationship got serious very serious and we said okay we're gonna value this relationship but my brother at that time went to church. Um, he was a Christian, a believer. He invited me to church. So he said, hey, come to, come to church with me. Wow. And then that's when I committed my, I, I said kind yes of to Jesus. From then on, I was on fire for the Lord. 
for the win. So again, Southern, Southern Baptist, Baptist, Southern Baptist Church. Um, and then, um, but I felt the true <clears throat> salvation, you know? So I go in the church, meanwhile, on five of the ladies, we're still dating, you know, like still dating, but still doing sexual relations and all of that. But I'm like, I'm kind of like pushing him away in a little, in, in a way, because I found salvation, I found fulfillment in Jesus. So now he's saying, oh, okay, I'm in church with her because I want her to still be my, I want her to still date me. So let me just go, right? Let, let me just tag along as the, the loyal boyfriend. Like, you know, yeah. what, what wrong could it do? And it's not they, really. You can tell yourself. Um, and one of the Wednesday night Bible studies in the middle of the week, everything that the, the pastor was saying was just resonating. It was, I had so many questions like from like 16 to 20 that I just, I couldn't answer no matter where I looked. Um, why am I here? What is my purpose? What am I even supposed to be doing? I have no idea where my life is going to wind up and amount to. And, and as he was talking about the reasons that Jesus really gives us life, that he gives us eternal life, that he forgives right. us our sins if we are to confess and repent and live and believe in his son, Jesus Christ. I was like, mm. this is everything I've been asking for. This is everything I've been like wondering about. And vaguely had an idea of Christianity, right. but it was never enough right. for me to be like, this is it. Like, I'm going to put my hope in my. And it was a, it was an altar call at the end of the prayer. And I raised my hand because I truly believed it. I was like, I, I'm believing everything that you're saying about this Jesus. Uh, I'm hearing it all in this true context for the first time. And I said, yeah. That was also when uh, maybe about a month, month and a half later, um, from when she started wow. going to that Bible study, that I gave my life to Christ too. Yeah. And we both attended the then, um, then, then the devil got a hold of us. I ended up back sliding. I did some drugs and went to clubbing. Um, there was this fire within me that there was no disciple. Them into the right place. We ended up. Um, where I, so uh, we we and then that's when we found out we had a baby. Then the, then the, then we made got married. Then the pregnancy happened, and I had a children a child. And then that's when it came into this play of he was still bound by mm -hmm. sin, which is which is true. That's what happens when you don't know deliverance, when you don't know the Holy Spirit. You know? Yeah. So we I tried to handle it on my own and when that that I kept lying to myself, telling myself, God, this will be the last time. I repent, please forgive me. And I was literally using God's grace as like a crush. Right. I said, Your word says you'll forgive me. So mm -hmm. I'm confessing it now. I'm really sorry. This is my last time viewing pornography. This is my last time masturbating. Like, I'm sorry, like, help me, please. And it would be like the very next day, right back to it. And I was just in this self-destructive cycle of, I can't do it by myself. I, I, had, I had no idea about deliverance back then. I had no idea about the power of the name of Jesus, the, the authority to the walk The blood free. of Jesus, none of that. We didn't I had know no idea, idea of this. So one night, uh, I felt, <clears throat> felt like I had to check his phone. It was like the middle of the night, I like, well, I don't know what time it was. Um, I ended up checking his phone, and I, I was, I'm kind of techie. I like looked into the back of my stuff. On that, he was in, in many, many things. And that's when I contemplated. I sat in the dark, literally. Oh. This was when our son was like maybe one, yeah. one maybe in between six to one, something like that. So this is one year, only one year in marriage. About, and then we, I'm, I'm sitting in the dark and I'm 
contemplating on grabbing my son and leaving, get out that, getting out of that house. We, cur we were living under my mom's roof because she was helping us. Um, but I had all the, all the thoughts. I wanted to wake him up and yell at him. I, I, w I, I was just in right. my mind a cycle of what do I do? So I just prayed because that's all I knew what to do. So I prayed and I said, what do I do? Jesus, what do I do? He just said, wake him up. So I woke him up and I, and I said, you have to talk to me in, in like in honesty. Yes. Have you been, been watching things? And then that's when we started opening up. We didn't get much that night, but I, I had to sleep on it because what do we do? What, what do we really do? He had to work the next day. So I had to dwell in that. And then we went to our pastor at the time and we did marriage counseling and all of that. But trust me, it didn't end. It, didn't end. it went into our second child. So after we had my second child, um, I told him, so you can imagine what ha had happened to me during the I could tell you there was a like a controlling spirit that came out from that trauma because my makeup became like the most demonized woman ever like you know those egyptian makeup it was like i became more sexual than ever before i started buying clothing lingerie like all of these things to make him to use him so that i can I can feel better about myself of what he did wrong to me. So what rose up within me was definitely as it, as we talk in deliverance is a Jezebel spirit, a controlling spirit rose up in me. And then we go into our, my second pregnancy where I had Levi and then um, we can talk Yeah, about. so, <coughs> excuse me. So the, um, after Levi was born, it was literally right around the same time frame again, maybe six to eight months. Mm -hmm. I was struggling with lustful eyes and lustful thoughts, but it was in the form of social media. So it was away from the video, the Facebook, it, it was Instagram, it was just temptation left and right. That was the time it was rising. And that was the time where sensuality was just coming in and the censorship was going down. Yeah. And it started to be like the casual glance. Oh, it's the, you know, nine pictures that are on the scrolling feed. It's the one. And then it just, my eyes just kept being drawn to it. Mm -hmm. And then it would be like, okay, I'm just going to look at it. Mm -hmm. And then the glance yeah. became a stare. The stare became like a gaze. And like before I knew it, like the vibe, like a lamb led to the slaughter. Yeah. I was walking into the trap. I knew the temptation was there. I knew I was being tempted, but I I wasn't listening to the word when it says God always makes a way out. I wouldn't put the app down. I wouldn't delete it. I wouldn't get out. I wouldn't even tell my wife. Yeah, and then again, something again, told me something to check on her. his uh, phone. Yep. And then I saw on his Instagram that he was viewing other women. And it was, it, yeah, it, it was more, you know, it was, it was again hitting me hard. I put on just. July 4th, I literally told him, I'm, I'm going to walk out on you. I will not stay with you at all if this continues, period. Because I, I can't, I, I'm praying for you. I'm doing all that I can to honor you. But you can't, you can't do this, you know, because now um, when the second child came, I, we, I had, I had, um, she what was it was doing called. everything right. right yeah, I, was, I had postpartum anxiety. So I was dependent on him. I was like asking him for help, for prayer. So our marriage was getting so much good, better. And we actually moved out of the condo and came to the we're currently at. And then I was, I was in love again. And he this made is, me feel this good. Is like, after it was better. Everything was getting better. While we're still doing the social media but, stuff. It's like identical to our story. Well, I did not know he was 
doing it. And and when I found out, I feel the Holy Spirit as you said that, by the way. Mm -hmm. As I found out that he was on that, it rock bottom me again. I said, and that's when I told him, I, I can't. You need to figure it out. You need to find a solution. You need to get help. Mm -hmm. You need to do whatever you can. But I am <clears> not going <throat> to even sleep with you. I'm not. No, I'm. I, no, I can't. I, I heal. And then there's just wounds going on me. And I'm going into this trauma again. So the next day, maybe it was like, um, it was July. Fourth at nighttime, and then I slept upstairs, and then I think he has a testimony. Um, that. so I'm laying there in the bed in the basement. That's where we were. Mm -hmm. uh, we were down there yeah. with we, uh, our second son, and uh, she took the came upstairs, and I'm just laying there, and I'm like, God, I don't know why, why can't. Why can't I have success? Why can't I overcome this thing? Why, why, why? I have all these angry and sad questions for God. And I expected an answer, but I didn't know the answer he was going to give me. He, he spoke to my heart in an inaudible way. Um, if you don't cherish what I gave you, I'm going to take it away. I'm going to take them away from you. If you don't want to get right, which you clearly you don't want to, you're still looking, you're still gazing, you're still searching, you're still typing it in. If you don't want what I gave you, I'm gonna take it away. And that was when I felt for sure, if I didn't right. take it seriously, right. my marriage was gonna be gone, my kids was gonna be gone, and I would be So that, is, that was kind of what a pivotal moment in my life that I realized I need to get free from things constantly bombarding my thought, my attention, everything. Um, and that was wow. like, what, 20, 2017 into 2018? Yeah. And, and so how did you? And he, he made ahead, commitments and um, communion with... <clears throat> Yeah. So in communicating to us, I personally would have the lustful eyes whenever he would be attempting to right. want to look or mm -hmm. go on social media. He had to get off of social media completely. Facebook, um, Instagram, no more. Like, not no, at all. No, I mean, I was just going to ask, how did you get free? And then I also want to know, Alyssa, because you mentioned <clears throat> not by way of sin, but by being sinned against that spirit that came over you where you were buying lingerie, you're doing your makeup a different way, trying to get attention. And, you know, it's like that thing just came over you almost. It came in, in a way of said, you're, he's not going to have any other reason to go anywhere else. I'm going to, I'm going to, there's something wrong with me. So I'm going to step up to another level, but it was a demonic level. It wasn't a natural level. And that thing, it not that, but <clears throat> like a um, similar thing came over my wife um, where she just was depressed. She felt unworthy, not enough. You know, what's wrong with me? <clears throat> and the truth is lust and sexual purity are two totally separate things. They're not, they're not the same, you know? It, and I just want to know, you know, can you kind of elaborate Jimmy on yeah. how you got free? Cause there's a lot of men that are probably watching. Dude, I'm telling you, if you're not spirit filled, I don't know how you escape. Instagram and Facebook without lusting and lusting with the eyes. Cause Proverbs talks about this. <laughs> it says, do not even enter the neighborhood or go down the street of the, of the, of the lustful woman or the, uh, the prostitute it says you'll enter her house and go down. She'll say, my husband is not here. I have Egyptian linens on the bed and all that. You'll go down and you'll be destroyed and be killed. It says, don't even enter the neighborhood. And this is the whole thing we're talking about. Don't go on social media. It's not and like, it's not about just not going to her house. Like you cannot be watching full fledged porn and be watch looking at pictures of women in bathing suits yeah. like I did on Instagram uh, for months and before any of that started happening. And it's just like you justify it. Oh, it's still closed. Well, dude, come on. Like read Matthew chapter five. You look at a woman lustfully. You look at a woman lustfully. You yeah. Adultery in your heart. Like you, you, it doesn't mean you, there's no separate sin of, hey, all the adulterers over here, adulterers in their hearts over here. No, you, adulterers. 
you're all in adultery. Can you elaborate a little bit on how you got free from that? And then Alyssa, you as well, and kind of your response to what he was doing? Yeah, so for in order for me, the freedom that I ended up, and it was very gradual at first, is just like my wife had shared, I started to communicate and express like explicitly in full detail um, what was um, where my weak points were um, temptations even a um, it's been this many days can we consider I had to express and communicate I and that was something that I struggled wow. with so much my entire life and even in the first half of my marriage my communication scale of one to the hundred was like a negative two. Me neither, man. Um, I did not know how to express because I was scared of arguments. I didn't want to bring dirty things out because, because I was going to hurt her again. I'll just bottle it up and figure it out. And I had to seek accountability. I had yeah, at that time really a good. small group of uh, <clears throat> small group men, but it was in depth. Yeah, this is not, it wasn't well, the me, full deliverance at that, that time. <clears throat> you said two really oh. huge things, okay. and that's honest communication and accountability. Yeah. At the time, I was I was going through celibate recovery, and so that's a whole thing about addiction. I mean, this is, this is sexual addiction. And the – dude, it's like our – our communication was just garbage anyways. I, we loved each other, but my God, we could not communicate worth anything. And I struggled so much. And what you said, this is the biggest lie of yeah. the devil. Okay, and Alyssa, you yeah. could probably attest to this. The biggest lie of the enemy is if, if when you tell her or if you tell her, you're going to hurt her so bad. So you just need to get free on your own. Don't tell anybody about it. And you know what? That's how darkness stays hidden. Like, like you want to know what, like, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, how the enemy yeah. stays. It's like if you. You tell you'll hurt her. That is manipulation. No, 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 no. Wow. If I don't, if I don't tell her, not only is she going to be hurt by what I did, she's going to be hurt by me lying to her all this time. Two separate sins against her, not just one. Two. And let me tell you something. My wife was hurt more by the lying for a year than she was by what I actually did. She not only felt hurt, but she felt betrayed. Like on. Honesty is the currency of relationships. And when you choose to suck all the honesty out, you have nothing else to exchange anymore. Yeah. And so, you know, I just, I think that's huge. Oh my God. It's, uh -huh. Let me tell you something. It was one of the worst pains I ever felt in my life. I journaled this when I was going through it. It's one of the worst pains that I ever felt in my life telling my wife, but the floodgates of my heart opened up. I think I cried for two or three weeks straight every day. Uh, for minutes to sometimes an hour or two hours, just crying. But it was also the most healing feeling, even though I knew how badly my wife was now hurting. And it almost feels selfish, but it was the most healing feeling in the world that now I knew I had exposed everything. I wasn't in darkness anymore. I wasn't in sin anymore. And now we could get healed. And so anyways, I just wanted to add that. Alyssa, go ahead. I want to hear your, your side of that. like so much with her with how she was feeling because I felt like the whole thing everything we gone through even though we did it as we were dating but when I told him that <clears throat> marriage is so important to me I meant it with the bottom of my I meant it with my whole heart I told him that and that I don't mess when it comes to marriage because I know what that did for my mom and dad I know that so I don't want to ruin this marriage. But when he told me this, when I when I caught him I didn't and all of that either. and see he didn't even come to me about it, I was like, Well, how long has it happened? So so the beginning of us even in together since we got married, you did it the whole time. So that means when we were in the bed together, yep. did we were you thinking about me or her or that? Mm -hmm. Like, what were you? And then those, those are the thought process I had that went in my mind. And I was being damaged, but at the same time, like, 
like I said, it demonically, like there was a stronghold that came over me and control him. And then that's when a Jezebel came out of, out of me and I controlled <clears throat> him. So I getting said, very rough. go do this for me, go life. do that or else well. this. Because I, yeah, so, so I wanted to kill me, but I, at the same time, I was broken. Every time I did my makeup, I said, I'm going to look good Not for him that. today. Healthy place. But it was. Yeah. This this because of the hurt that I went through. I have a testimony also where wow. I was sexually molested by a family member when I was young at seven years old. And then that opened the door for lust wow. my whole life. And then I lost my virginity at twelve years old. So I knew how to control men in my life. But when it came to him, I truly <clears> loved <throat> him and I loved that he loved me. And in the beginning, as we are high school, in, in our dating dates, even though they might seem not loved to anybody, it was for me. So there was a soul tie there. There was this big attachment to him and me. And I said, I will cherish this moment. I felt like everything that we went through leading up to even his freedom. I hear about and, that. and we went through deliverance. Let me tell you that. And that was just how very recent. That was a that was the pivotal point of everything. <clears throat> everything and all the residue came off. Like I believe if the Holy Spirit is you know, what is that verse? When the flesh is weak, <clears throat> the flesh but, is the willing, spirit, but the spirit uh, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Wi willing. So the spirit was willing, so that's why we were able to <clears throat> transition. It was, so we got out of the South the Southern Baptist Church. We were looking for the form. And then we got baptized by the Holy Spirit from a small. Then. Yeah, then get straight, straight to we it. Are, we we got stuff. into the core group. So I'm just going to skip all of that. There. We don't need to go into all of that. <clears throat> yes, Lord. The, the core group is the awesome. All of yeah. it. So the core group, I was on a blade. In July, he accepted the calling of the missionary. Right. Then the Korgo was the core for us. It really was. If it wasn't that, we would have not been able to be and do what we're doing today right now. Right. That's for everybody. I mean, they were the stepping stone of everything that we thought we knew we did not know, really. The Korgo <clears throat> became just like a, a catalyst. And it a just catalyst, a it lifted moment. everything. Yes. Like our, our our faith, our belief, our yeah. marriage, just everything. Her first um, uh, teaching that I saw was a spirited orphan, and I got I got freedom from that. And that's when I told him there is something that's happening to me that I could tell you that I didn't know my whole entire Christian life that can happen, and I felt lifted in freedom. But we need to get into this. And he kind of wasn't all in it even then. But I when when did the deliverance actually have a communion for you? <clears throat> uh, in in North Carolina. Like deliverance, like if yeah, yeah, North Carolina. Um, that was the actual first time. So I would say I I had two critical deliverances <clears throat> where I, I had a really good but we were asked to speak and uh, uh, preach a, uh, a sermon. And on Sunday, wonderful message. And then literally the day right after, you know, where I'm still like struggling with controlling my eye gaze. Yeah. Uh, my eyes are still like wondering and trailing and I like caught, she- I, I caught him looking again. And I said, I got so upset and I, but it was, it was a humbling spirit because it was a Holy Spirit. Not not in in that controlling way. It was literally like, this demon needs to go. I know it's a demon now. Because I was in core group and I'm learning deliverance. This is when Jenny started deliverance, all of that. So I identified it and I said, we cannot right. go on yeah. to this calling <laughs> of missionary. So after we got baptized by the Holy Spirit, that's our marriage really became like a glue and the Lord molded us together. Mm. We went through a lot of healing. Wow. He went through his accountability. After the communication part, we just, we were so much more wow. together than 
ever before. So that was only by the grace of God and by him. And that's when I started loving him more and appreciating right. more and trusting him more because he started communicating to me and, and healing with that. So I think we were praying together and doing all of that. And then, so when, um, when Jenny got into the deliverance and all of that, and I said, okay, it needs to stop today. Mm. So we're in North Carolina. Something came over me and I felt that the Lord was speaking to us. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me and he was literally saying, he, we, you guys cannot go on in this faith journey with me when this is going on. I felt that same urge to just get in the right. car and leave. Something was telling me to get in the car and go. Grab your phone. I'm, I'm in North Carolina. Where am I going to go? So then, um, then we, I did a deliverance over him with the, with the leading of the Holy Spirit. I was afraid. I'm telling you. Because the devil did not want wow. me to do it. He was putting so much. I was shaking like anything at first. I said, no, I have to do this because the Lord is telling me to. Mm. So the Holy Spirit filled me up and I just went into words. I don't Jimmy, even remember you were, that night. It was, actually, you, you like, were allowing her to do it. It was very you. hazy, but what I, I, I admitted that I said, look, I have a problem and I, I don't want this problem anymore. And whatever needs yeah. to happen, I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. I want to be free from it. I keep being led. And it was truly the Holy Spirit because- I think that's amazing that- She literally said, I need the Holy Spirit. That's when you got free of it? <clears throat> I think it's amazing that though that- That was, that was probably wife. the I mean, largest- You hear that testimony many yeah. times, y'all. You hear the testimony of the wife praying for the husband, the husband getting set free. You don't hear oh. too many times of the wife actually doing deliverance on her husband. That's amazing, guys. Wow. And I don't recommend it, obviously. I don't because um, I don't want it to be like a haughty right. thing. It's not. It was truly, I, I even told, I, you don't consent it, I'm not doing it ever. You know, I won't do it. We'll find, we'll ask someone to help us. But we were in the middle of... No, I think it's wonderful. Of, as long as it's with, our, with the right motive and humility, I think it's absolutely wonderful. So, yeah. I mean, I know the time is essence, so we won't go so deep into the deliverance, but that was a part of one. And, and then we'll... There was another deliverance, but then there was one that was very, that stood out that was in the hotel room after, after the Lakeland meetup, the Lakeland yeah. meetup. You got delivered in a hotel so, room? So, <clears throat> in the I so that was, so in the, in the, in the, in the, I'm not kidding room. you, God came yeah. in the room and delivered me himself. Are I'm you, not kidding. <laughs> after that, wow. So. She, I, I was still like, res I, I was getting upset about like just fasting and, and whatever deliverance came up, it just seemed to like hit a wrong chord with me. And I was just kind of like, mm. I, I don't know why we did the deliverance to be honest with you. It was really, it was really weird how that was set up. Oh, we talked about, okay. So we talked uh, about okay. our calling. What do we believe that the Lord has called our ministry towards to what is our heart that we have for others is, is actually, wow. Uh, can we say it? like human trafficking? Yeah. P women kind of hard to do with the spirit of trafficking rest. and also children. Mm -hmm. So, or yeah, yes. definitely. So I wouldn't say that again on the Facebook up human with that human was, I wouldn't say it again because uh, they might pull it off. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, really? Um, so, yeah. So, so would you that, say that situation? That's it. Well, I don't know how to say it. So, right. Um, right. the lustful thing that people do to take people, that they will say it like that. But mm -hmm. anyway, so then um, uh, he he said, okay, purge me, take it out, whatever. Right. Just, said, just whatever, do it. Whatever's just there, it just take care of it. Just take care of it. <laughs> I cannot not this man, this man, man just literally, literally 
literally plopped down on the hotel floor. And he, I thought I, I was so, Lord, help me. I said, Lord, help me. I, I thought he was knocked out, blacked out, done. I didn't know what to do. Then he kept, and I said, um, I told him, I said, I said, babe, I love you. You need to come back, help me because I am afraid. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what I need to do. I need your help. And it was so weird. It was a mutual deliverance. Yes, Lord. Like he was helping me. I You're was helping him. And it was like too. this. So I. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> it was crazy. And then he told me his head. He said his head. Mm -hmm. The imagery, his eyes. He said, perversion, I see the imagery. You need to take that off. All the things that I saw from that, from that video, from the videos that I watched, from the images, you need to take it off. So I started anointing. I started whatever he was communicating. Completely, completely like the Lord. And then there was one other incident. We were just at Orlando. We saw a transaction happen. We saw a transaction Can't happen. Can't say the word. Um, Between a man and a woman. <laughs> For activities she, and she was she was not properly dressed she wasn't dressed for the weather let's say that and right when we were trying to minister to them and speak the gospel mm -hmm. um our baby started crying immensely and yeah. we knew okay it's late at night we're in a neighborhood we don't know we need to take care of our family first yeah. <laughs> and they were gone i'm driving maybe a mile and a half down the road ripping the the steering wheel with so much like intensity, I can feel my fingernails digging into my palm yeah. through the steering wheel. And I'm like burning in hatred. And I get to this point and I'm like, I need to pull over. I've got to get out and pray. Mm -hmm. We stop in front of this tiny little, I guess, strip mall building area. I get out the car and I am just crying and praying and like, wailing out to God for these people. And I'm like asking for them to repent. Mm -hmm. And I start to, this noise starts to come out of my throat that I can't even describe. It's a mix between pain, anguish, sorrow, and like just anger on what I just witnessed. Yeah. And I start to projectile vomit on the sidewalk right in front of me. Yeah. Multiple times. It's the groaning. Like I can't Holy control Spirit. it. I can't even make up the sounds. And I'm in the fetal position on the I'm in a fetal position, crying next to everything I just released. And I'm like, God, you, you can stop this to be there. Can you just cancel the, the act? Can you just destroy it? Can you remove it? Like, I can't even, like, I wish I could unsee what I saw. And I believe that it was part deliverance, but part of a wake-up call for yeah. me to realize this is what I'm showing you this is what breaks my heart and it's breaking your heart too y'all that's amazing yeah. so yeah. now that all the residue is gone you know like so now i mean we are both on fire for god and we both want to shake hell up i am telling you get those marriages back get the marriages back you know Teach parents how to be kingdom, you know, uh, parents to their children to, to make them kingdom kids. Our hearts are for the children. Our hearts are for uh, marriages. But, I mean, what I love him. So, like you were saying, I love him so much. And I even tell him, and there are times that I told him, like, that it's only gonna get this better. is the best that we've ever yeah. been, ever, in our And I, I don't know what to say. It's just all glory to God how he changed. And I believe it's truly the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need to be, like, operating and knowing the fire of God and the power of God, blood Amen. of Jesus, <clears throat> and throat> the throat> power throat> in the throat> name of Jesus. <laughs> my wife and I have been through a similar process as Joel. Yes. I got massively delivered last January um, in a hotel room. And just this past – so we do a, what's called a vision retreat every year. And it – excuse me. 
it's been a time for us in the past. We go set goals, all this stuff. But this year, just God has transformed us so much last year. He did so much in us last year. I, you know, I had the biggest transformation of my life last year. I mean, he transformed all my desires, all my wants, everything he changed. This year we went, I said, we're not coming. Don't you bring one goal. <clears throat> don't bring anything. Don't bring an idea. We're going to get before the Lord, and we are going to listen to him. And whatever he speaks on, we can set strategies and goals using the wisdom of Holy Spirit based on whatever he speaks. If he doesn't speak on something, there's no goals for that. There's no strategies for that. Wow. He spoke zero business. Uh, he spoke to us zero on our businesses. Nothing. So guess how many goals we have for our business? None. <clears throat> That's a miracle yeah. for me in my life. I used to be driven by the love of money. <laughs> and <clears throat> let me tell you one thing that did happen on this vision retreat. My wife has seen the transformation that happened partly from my seeking, partly from her prophesying and continuing to pray for me and declare for me and love me in my mess. <clears throat> she told me in January at our vision retreat, she said, Landon, mm -hmm. I give my body back to you. She said, I, and this is after mm -hmm. a long time of healing. I mean, all my stuff came out in 2020. So it's been a long time of healing at the beginning of 2020 into 2019. And <clears throat> a couple of years of healing, she gave her body back to me. And y'all, we have been, we, we are anointing each other with oil, laying hands on each other. I mean, God has just totally transformed our marriage, just like you guys. I need to do a whole testimony video. I don't think I've even shared it. I don't think I've ever shared it publicly, like online. I think it's only yeah. ever been in conversations. Right. And what God did to I, me in that deliverance. I mean, that was a whole nother <laughs> unbelievable <Wow>. um, <clears throat> experience. It's interesting that your pivotal moment was our pivotal moment kind of like last year too, yeah. in yeah. a way. Yeah. But yeah, I, it was a I pivotal like for moment us, for us man, last year too. It's kind of like there's the core group airplane oh. and like Jenny's like, oh no, only only women can come in, but you guys can hang on to the wing out here. And I'm just like, we've been like hanging on to the wing, like, <laughs> <laughs> like out here in the blast of the Holy Ghost. And now they finally let us in. It's like, finally. It's like, no, you're going to have to suffer for it for a little bit to show yeah. that you really want it before any men are allowed to come in. So, <clears throat> funny enough, I was there when Isaiah preached in October, even though no women were allowed. <laughs> Jenny put me on the deliverance team. To this day, I don't, I don't know why. I was brand new to the deliverance. Oh, wow. I'm like, sure, whatever you need to do. But she put me on it, y'all. That was the start for deliverance for me. It was back in October. <laughs> Dude, I oh my gosh, that's crazy because he was on fire. Oh, uh, she told me as soon as she came, but she's like, I had done that. This guy named Man that he was on that fire. One. Whoa. Wow. How many do more than I did before do you I got there? That you did there? I don't know. I, I, I don't oh know. My God. Some <laughs> well, you know what? I, I that was the you. most. Um, anyways, it was wonderful. Like, we've been doing a lot of deliverance since then. Uh, God's really uh, maturing us in that department. Yeah. <clears throat> Even though I keep getting called out for stuff. <laughs> I really do. I can't say publicly what it, what it, what it was because it's hilarious. But uh, <laughs> anyways, so look, <clears throat> there's one thing I really wanted to highlight, Jimmy that you said is that when you saw that happening, you had so much hatred for that. It was a godly hatred and a righteous anger. We don't talk, <clears throat> we talk all the time about the love of God. We do not talk about the hatred of God. We like to pretend that he doesn't have hatred in his heart. He does have hatred in his heart. It is towards sin and towards things that destroy people. And let me tell you what got me free. <clears throat> it yeah. wasn't just the love of God. Mm -hmm. That was part of it. But the hatred of God towards what was keeping me bound. I began, <clears throat> my eyes were open to see, to begin to wow. hate the effects of pornography and masturbation and lust. And the, the lust of the eyes. To hate the effects that it was having on my marriage. Mm -hmm. What it was doing to my wife. What it would eventually do to my family. Splitting us apart if I didn't stop. <laughs> I had to learn how to love what he loves and hate what he hates. 
The Bible says that there are seven things that the Lord hates. Go read that. I think it's in Proverbs, I believe. Seven things the Lord hates. Six that are detestable to him, seven that he hates. The Lord has hatred in his heart towards the things that bind people, that cause people to be in bondage and slavery, and to break fa- – especially things that break marriages apart and break families apart. He hates those things, okay? <clears throat> we have to learn how to hate these things, to catch the mm. heart of God, and not ju- – yeah. oh, yes. I'm getting upset about it. Too many yeah. churches and ministers put up with absolute foolishness. Yeah. They put up with foolishness. They want to patty cake it and, and g- give a donut mm-hmm. to somebody who's coming in with yep. a broken marriage. They don't operate no. out of a spirit of discernment, discerning of spirits and a word of knowledge. And they're not seeing these things. And the men are too prideful to bring it up and say anything about it. And I got to keep it to myself and fix it myself. The women are too broken yeah. to say anything about it. It's, it's like, where is the fire and the anointing of God? Wow. Right. Where is it? I'm going to tell you something. My desire in my life mm-hmm. is to be the living sacrifice mm-hmm. burning on the altar. You come around me and you touch me. You get close enough to me. You're going to be in the fire with me. Yeah. That's my desire. It's me and my wife. That's what we're doing. Come this on. year, we're oh, the altar. You're not going to be able to distinguish between us and Amen. the flames. All you're going to see is the flames. You're going to say, they're in there somewhere. I don't know, but I see the oh. fire of God. That's all oh. we want is for people to see Jesus through us. We need... I'm telling you, it is the yeah. anointing. It's yeah. not the church Jesus. service, not the happy-go-lucky preacher, not the people who are sitting around just, oh, Jesus loves you. Here's a track. Here's a, let me just say a sweet little prayer, put you on our prayer list at church. No, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing. <laughs> and I'm believing God. Yeah. yeah. People of, I'm believing oh, for the God. people of God to rise up, begin to love what he loves and hate what he hates, and not be ashamed to speak the truth. To say Amen. what it is, to call sin yes. for sin, to not be afraid Hold to call that. somebody yeah. out as long as it's done in the spirit of love, not be afraid to call somebody out and say, this cannot happen any longer. When God gives you a word for somebody, you better say it. That's right. Uh, come on, y'all. <clears throat> amen to those babies. Amen. Those babies yeah. are saying amen. <clears throat> I just, I think this is really, really big. I think we yeah. have to think step up as the body of Christ and stop being ashamed. Of the gospel. Stop being ashamed when God wants to call sin out around you. Stop being ashamed of it. I'm serious. We need this. We we need this. We need this so bad. And so, guys, we, we want to uh, – some of you who are watching okay. in the comments, okay. I want you to write your prayer request about your marriage, about whatever it is. Um, to some extent, all of them are pretty close to the same. But I want you to write your prayer request. And we're going to begin going through these things as much as we can this time a lot for maybe the next five minutes. And we're going to pray. We're going to call the fire of God down on these things. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. As you guys put your prayer requests, um, Jimmy and Alyssa, why don't you just kind of like digitally lay hands on these prayer requests as they come through? Not that you have to go over yes. – um, each one of them and pray through each one of them just kind of all in one you guys begin praying and then i'll end as well i sure y'all I sure wish my wife could be here she's amazing she she is the besides jesus she's the rock in my life oh i, I she studied she's gonna be pr- bringing the fire of god down on a bunch yeah. of women this weekend through the women's retreat i wish she could be here she has so much she could say i tend to miss I, things oh. and she's like oh you forgot about this da, da, da. And so I wish she was here. She's my better half. But anyways, I love you, Krista. If you're watching, um, y'all should be preaching this weekend. Hopefully we're able to go live and you're able to watch that. But uh, anyways, I'm having to do it on my own. Amen. Thank God she uh, she prayed me through and got me set free so I could be here today by myself and acting right. Amen. Amen. Okay. So you guys begin praying. Um, you don't have to go through them, each of them one at a time. We're just going to believe that God's going to be answering these as y'all are praying and then I'll finish. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Father, we pray for Wilma right now. Right now, Lord, the marriage that you are preparing the right man, the right biblical man. To, Lord, Lord, remove all of these distractions. Remove all of the people that are trying to come into her inbox, her life, that is trying to do one thing. 
I proclaim right now that if Jesus, they are not whoa. after Jesus, that they're yeah. Lord, spirit of discernment right now. Give her discernment of the Holy Spirit to know who is who ah, and to just box. filter it. There's no time to waste with useless, um, just trivial pursuits anymore, oh, Lord. Gosh. I pray, Lord, that you will give her wisdom, knowledge, and understanding right now. That, oh, Lord, gosh. you will bring the biblical marriage to her Ooh, and that they, me. as a hus one husband, will represent oh, Jesus Christ. We yeah. pray in Jesus' name for Wilma and her future husband. We pray for her Boaz to come right now. <clears throat> I said, you don't, have to, you don't have to do each prayer request. We're just, just hit them all over. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, everyone that has watched, everyone that has commented, and everyone who will even watch later, Yes, Lord, I their marriage right now. Yes. Bring forth everything draw it out into yes, the light Lord. right now jesus. in jesus mighty name bring it all out put all of it on the table and let the lord deal with it right now in jesus mighty name let there be healing let there be reconciliation yes let there be a holy wholeness in their marriage yes Testimony breaks the enemy's lies and shame. Kura mande kura. Know that if yes. anyone is unequally yoked, kara raba so as father that you bring him or her back to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the fire ablaze in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let them ablaze within them. Let them be one in flesh, one in spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, every, every sin, I expose every sin within the marriage. I ask that God, that you put a light on it in Jesus' mighty name, that all marriage will be restored this year in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, the fire of God on that one. Oh, Rabashe, Lord. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, invite you even right now. Yes. Literally have your way with all of your people right now. Married, single, whatever. Lord, young or old, have your way. Believer or non believer, start to stir in their heart right now advocation for the love of God yes. to love the things that the father loves <clears throat> and to hate the things that he hates yes. 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 every yes. devil yes. demon in life or yes. marriage that is operating get behind us now yes. be, foot. Yes. be destroyed and dashed to pieces yes. that the marriage yes. is inseparable yes Three cord is hard to separate. That's Husband, that's wife, and the love of the Lord. Binding this all together. So, Father, I pray that you will just touch every single person right here, Lord. Oh, you meet them where they're at. You call forth what needs to be. You convict, not us. Yes. We cannot do anything. It is all for you to do. But we will pray and contend yes, for Lord. biblical marriages. Husbands, fathers mothers, wives, children, the family yes, that you have intended, Lord. Let your oh, will gosh. be exerted on yes, earth yes, as it is in, in heaven. heaven. Yes. Oh, right. We thank you for the differences. We thank you for the freedom. We thank you for the testimonies that are going to come forth. We speak to the person that's been in the back. Boldness, come forth and speak that testimony right now. Everyone this has done for you mm. and set all the people free as you get out of your bondage you will set all the people free. Jesus 
tongues of fire descend on them right now to speak with a holy reverence for you. Father, we just want to thank you. We, we, we want to thank Jenny and Stephen Weaver. We want to thank the core group. We want to thank the Baileys, Ian and Jacynthia with Core Marriage. We want to thank Landon and Krista Latham with the Refuge Lighthouse. Lord, you are just bringing so many brothers and sisters to come together, to pray, to speak, to proclaim, to prophesy, and to teach. We need discipleship, Lord. And we thank you and we honor these men and women of God that have been pouring into our lives. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We just want to be Thank vessels you for you. So much, Jesus. We don't want anything in return. We're just vessels for you, Lord. Can you just glorify yourself through us whatever way that it can? If we gotta put our laundry and our dirtiness for the world to see how good Amen. you are, so be it. Yes. I'm not Lord. ashamed. So be it, Lord. We thank you for these people. Yes, Lord. May God me, uh, be glorified uh, always uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Please, before we pray, hold on. Let me take this thing out of here. Wilma, are you still on here? Wilma Stutzman, are you still on here? <clears throat> Thank you so much. Wilma, you're still on here. Listen, Lord says you have a... Uh... <clears throat> Noel Daniels. Wilma, <clears throat> you're very hurt, but in your trauma... You have a uh, very controlling and domineering spirit that's come over you. It says that you're not going to be hurt again. And mm -hmm. it has come to tell you it's going to keep you safe and it's going to protect you. You're going to destroy your next marriage if you don't get free of this. <clears throat> so, Wilma, put your hands oh, up right now. It. Oh, the fire of so God. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Through my hands. Wilma, put your hands up. You're about to get delivered. But, yeah. <clears throat> Wilma. Surrender your life to Jesus right now if you haven't already and renounce Ooh. all the trauma. Uh, right now, well, I want you to renounce the trauma that happened in that marriage. Say, God, I give it all to you and I renounce every spirit that came in. <laughs> I renounce every spirit that came in through the trauma in my marriage. You have five seconds to do that right now. <clears throat> Come on. Well, my Put wow. your hands up. Cool. It's leaving. Ho! Cool. Oh, right now in the middle of my video. Thank you. 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 Eyes like fire and hair like wool, feet like burnished bronze, who sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven. He says, every spirit that came in through marital trauma, through abuse, through hurt, through pain, I command it to leave in the name of Jesus right now. Out. <laughs> All of it up and out in Jesus' name. Now, fire of God, come down on that thing in Jesus' name. Burn. <clears throat> All of it. I command every bit of it to burn. I command every bit of the fire of God to come over it. Up and out now. Shut that about. Out, says the Lord. Out, says the Lord. Up and out right now. Ho, shut that about Sundin. Shut that about Sundin. I'm a shikha. 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 Wilma, you're getting free. Let's go, Wilma. You're getting free now. Ho. Wilma, what's happening to you? Put in the comments if you're even able to. I don't know if you're even able to. <clears throat> Put it in the comments. Ho, oh, somebody's got uh, yep, somebody's got a spirit that's got a hold of the yep. throat right now. Right. You can't get free from it. It's got a hold of your throat. It keeps you from talking. Put your hand on your throat right now. God's setting you free. Right now, I command that thing come out of your throat. You python spirit, come out of the throat right now in Jesus' name. Come out of that <laughs> right off. Come out of that throat right now in Jesus' name. You're setting that person free. Yes. You can't have a hold of them anymore. I command it off right now in the name of Jesus. Who is that? Put me in the comments. Off right now in the name of Jesus. All of it. Up and out go. There's some baggage. There's some... Mm, there's some... With it, but because of some other thing, all the baggage, you're being healed of it right now. Being healed right now in Jesus' name. All that baggage, all the trauma, everything that happened, you're being healed right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. 
<clears throat> we intercede for marriage right now. God, I thank you that your marriage is the picture of kingdom as a husband, a wife. Yes, Lord. Husband laying down his life as Christ laid it down for the church. Wives submitting to their husbands. <clears throat> yes, Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name for healing over marriages. Oh, oh, the devil has been playing. He's had his hands in your marriage too long. He's been playing too long. If the right hand causes you to sin. I say the right hand of the enemy is causing you to sin. And we cut it off in the name of Jesus and throw it. That your marriage may not enter heaven, but you may you enter the kingdom of heaven. I see the hand of the enemy down in marriages, creating all kinds of torment. No more, says the Lord God. Break. Break. In the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your hand upon marriages. Ho! Thank you for your hand of anointing. I see the anointing oil of heaven being poured out from the throne over marriages right now in Jesus' name. Anointing oil from heaven poured out over your marriage right now in Jesus' name. Yep. Before you got on, you said it was hopeless. No more. It's not going to happen. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You quit using your mouth to prophesy for the devil. You start using your mouth to prophesy for the Lord. And you say it is going to, what God has has brought together, let no man separate, says the Lord. You stop speaking about divorce. Healing come in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for your anointing oil of our marriages. God, you're not just anointing marriages to be restored. No. These marriages, when they get welded together and they become one they are a mighty weapon against the kingdom satan wants to keep you divided because when you're together you become a mighty weapon for the kingdom that's not only are you going to be healed but you're going to start chopping the hands of the enemy off of marriages your marriage your testimony says the lord you are the breaker you are the one to break mm, you're the one to Break people free from the yoke of bondage, says the Lord. Thank you, Father God. I pray the anointing of intertwined marriages to begin to come down upon your people. Marriages be restored. The fire of God come down. I speak the fire of God to come down and make two things that could not be made one to make them one. I pray the miracles come right now. Shay, your marriage is being, oh yeah. Right now, I speak it in Jesus' name. That face that's hard as flint be made soft and malleable in the hands of the Lord. (laughs) Tears are coming out of stones, Shay, says the Lord. Tears are coming out of stones, says the Lord. Father, I thank you for your hand on marriages. We we ask God as this video goes forth and as people replay that your anointing would break the yoke. That your oil would flow, Lord God. That your power would go in and restore and bring healing and set people free in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for what you're doing, God. And we just look forward to this testimony. I bless, even as my wife's not here, but in spirit, my wife and I bless Jimmy and Alyssa right now. Let me wait upon the Lord for a moment for you guys. Oh. Alyssa, I see you beholding with your eyes, beholding with your eyes, Jesus Christ, enrobed in glory, standing in heavenly places. You're going to be caught up in glory. Jimmy, your wife is going to say things to you, and it's not going to make sense, but it's because she saw it in the glory, oh. and you're going to have to just follow it. And not only this, you're going to be a witness to men on how to follow your wife. How to be the head in the seal of authority over your wife as Romans commands, yet following your wife as well. The same way Stephen does. He is the head over his wife. He is the seal of authority placed over his wife, yet he's empowering his wife under his covering to lead. Jimmy, I see your wife. Yes, Alyssa, I see you taking the lead in this. Yes. You're going to see Jesus robed in glory in the heavenlies, and he's going to speak to you. He's going to tell you what to do. 
It's not going to make sense sometimes. He's going to give you things that you would have had to ask special investigators. Mm. Inroads. In yep. I see inroads. I see roads leading in that no one knows of. The God, secret roads, secret ways that no one knows about that God's taking you down. That people say, how did you get here? How'd you figure this out? Jesus. Jimmy, God's hand of anointing is on your life. His hand is resting upon your head. See the oil as it went down Aaron's beard. The oil of God, the oil of his anointing is floating on you. I see supernatural strength coming over you. <clears throat> I say you're not weak. I say you're not timid. I break timidity right now in Jesus' name. The word says strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. I break timidity and weakness off of you in Jesus' name. Mm. Insecurity. I'm not enough. I break it in Jesus' name. Father, I, I see the anointing of strength coming That's upon you, Jimmy. I see that you're almost being used as if, God, as if you are becoming the arm of God moving in the earth. Yes, yes. That as he moves, you move. As he stays still, you stay still. I see his hand upon your head. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Father, let your oil, the anointing oil, your oil of your anointing in the spirit begin to flow all over him in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. There is glory on your unity, says the Lord. There is glory that you cannot get separately. Marriages, listen up. There is a glory in the anointing you cannot receive as an individual, but only as a marriage that is submitted and surrendered and come together as one. God is anointing and blessing your marriage in a way that you never thought possible. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for this time together. We love you, Jesus. We honor you for what you've done. We honor you for the word of the Lord. We honor you, Father God, for, as you said to Samuel, every word would come to pass. I think every word that they've prayed and that I've prayed would come to pass in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Whoa! Look at mm -hmm. Jesus. <laughs> Guys, like and share, 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 this, share this with somebody. There's somebody you know whose marriage is broken that needs to hear this. They need it like their life depends on. You better remember if your marriage is restored. Yeah. You better remember when you were broken and when you needed to see something like this. Send this to as many people as you can. God is going to, I'm telling you, people are going to get delivered watching this. There's going to be people in months from now watching this. They're going to get delivered watching, uh, just from seeing this. Amen. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I have to be obedient, but how much time do you have? Oh boy. Cause, uh, cause, uh, I have a word for you too. Uh, I can't shake this off. I can't shake it off, but every time I see your eyes, there is a fire within your eyes that sets a blaze. A fire that even when I look at it, I can't stare at it for too long. That there, there is this fire that comes in your eyes that's from your eyes. It reminds me of this, but you're not Jesus. You know what I mean? But it's like, it reminds me of Jesus where his eyes are fire. But every time I see that your eyes, there is this sense of authority. And ooh, I feel the fire. Got over me. There is a sense of authority of deliverance. And it was different mm -hmm. from when I saw you landed in October. Oh, Rabasso. It is so, so much different, but I can't, right. I can't even look at your eyes. And I know, I know who I am in Jesus. But when I stare at you, I stare at for too, too long because I feel like I like there is this sense of like it's not fear, but it's like oh, he has the authority in Jesus Christ, and he knows who he is, and and, and that you use that for deliverance. So, Father, I just thank you for for him and his 
fire in his eyes that he is going to use it for your kingdom to shake hell up, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. But I don't even see that on, on you, but I now as I'm praying, I see mm. it on Krista too, that you guys are together like a fireball, yes, that you guys are fire, that you, that you guys are, that, that when you guys stand together, the, the hell rumbles, they're shaken, they get, they're just like, I can't stand their presence and what they bring. It's like a fire that lights up. I'm trying to stay up because there is this, as I'm saying fire, I feel the fire all over me. I feel the fire all over me. Oh, shit, you guys are going to bring in. You guys are going to bring in this fire. Even now, even now, but there's a fire that says a blaze everywhere you guys go. Everywhere you guys go. And no one's going to forget you guys. It's going to be Landon and Krista. They're going to know who you are. Ah, you guys think that it's going to be only you, though. Those children of yours are going to be even more. It's good. They're going to be even more. They're going to be even more. They're if you have anything, because I can't stop. Oh, Landon, I, I was uh, I was seeing two things just now, even just interceding as the word was going forth. I saw two things. Um, I saw the first yes, that Lord. Shab, Meshach, and Abednego were in. And I believe that of you and Krista, that you guys have been in the fire Whoosh. for so long, and that the heat had been turned up seven times, Whoosh, that you guys are actually the fire now. Whoosh. And then the other thing that I saw, I saw a wheel with many spokes in it and it was turning on. with like this violent velocity clockwise just turning and turn turning and i believe that that is that is your ministry that is your advancement of the kingdom of god that it is spinning with so much violence and velocity that when it hits the traction and it hits that platform at that exact moment that he has ordained it's going to take off. So you guys are going to be a court to be reckoned with that, yes. that yes, the Lord. kingdom of I God can't. is recognizing you guys and that you are being set on notice right now. And there's not a thing they can do about it. That violent spinning wheel with many spokes and I think the spokes are even representing spiritual children that will come under the discipleship and the care and the love that you guys have and the fire, the fire that emanates oh, from you and Krista. Oh, you guys have been forged in the fire enough. Where you are the fire, you are the fire and brimstone of Christ. You're going to set so many people free together. So many marriages set on fire together. Oh, shut up. Lord, just let it be so unto the Lathams, Lord. Thank you for their obedience to you. Oh, Rabba, shukura, my Jesus. Jesus name. Are you feeling it? You're hearing something, aren't you? I just, I can't. Like, I'm, I'm, I, the, the, what you guys carry, it's, I don't, I'm, I'm sensitive in the spirit, right? I'm, I'm sensitive in the Holy Spirit. But what you guys carry, it's like, like I never got fired like that. <laughs> I never got fired like that. Like I could feel the fire as I speak and release that word. Woo! Ooh. You guys carry something that is amazing. That's why we love you all. I amazing. Think you're and that, maybe that's why we love you guys so much because. <laughs> 
I'm telling you, I'm telling you. No, oh, I, oh, just, I knew we, oh, Lord, I shut Ooh, hey, we're going to see each other that in like fire. two weeks. When's our next retreat? <laughs> no, I'm about to go to their house like right now. Let's yeah. keep here and let me just. Biscuits and gravy. Oh, and my Lori, God. I'm going oh. to uh, make can't... a video on making that and send it to you. <laughs> Promise you. Y'all, I'm like, I'm so overwhelmed right now with the goodness of God. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> I'm so overwhelmed. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> people, people see fire, and they they, they want the fire. Okay, it, with with the with the best of intentions. But what they don't want is the purifying the purifying fire. They don't want the purity, and even though they start, they don't finish That's the process wow. of being purified. And let me tell you something. <clears throat> The pure you are, the it, purity doesn't just come from this, this this mystical process. Oh, I want to be pure, and you step into some cloud. It comes from dying. It comes from laying stuff that were a lot of repentance over even the smallest things. That like <clears throat> I said something the the Holy Spirit's been speaking very very clearly to me. I said something the other day I haven't not said in years. I said, oh, it's going to work like a charm. Holy Spirit came into the room. I felt His presence enter the room. They say, I don't want anything to work like a charm for you. Don't you ever call some enchantress spell back up again. Mm. And I repented. I said, yes, Holy Spirit. I said that out loud oh, in my. the room with people listening to me. Yes, Holy Spirit. I don't want it to work like a charm either. Thank you, Jesus. I repented right there. The more you repent, the more you hear his voice. Over the smallest things. If you're not going to watch people okay. having sex right here in your house, don't watch it on a TV show. Mm. Not even – if you're not going to watch – listen to people cursing right here in your house, stop Amen. listening on TV shows and Facebook videos. The things that you would not allow your children to see, that you wouldn't allow coming to your marriage, right. stop watching it through your eye gates. Repent. Repent yes. over the things yes. that are not oh just sin, but the things that are yes. small waywardness. Yes. Because the devil only needs you to get off track a little bit. Paul said, all things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. <laughs> Cast the things out that are unbeneficial. The, the things that when he said, lay everything that hinders aside so that you may run your race. He was talking to church people. He wasn't talking to the lost. And the things that he was talking about laying aside, these people were already repentant of sin. So what are they laying aside? The worries of this, this world. The, 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 the lust of the eyes, the, lust, the, the, the things that are not even sin anymore. I want this. I want that. I want to make more money. I want this or that or the other. You know, the, the desires that, that are not even of God, like laying the, laying the smallest things aside, allowing yourself to repent over the smallest things. This is where the purity comes from. The fire, I'm telling you guys, the fire is just an after effect. There's oil. <clears throat> When the oil is pure, the yeah. fire burns hottest. When Jesus talked about lamps, mm. when he talked about fires, he was talking about oil lamps. Oil that's been purified and crushed and brought to the point where it's ready mm. for use. Some of you are not ready for use yet because you're not ready to expel the things within wow. yourself that are holding you back for, the, for being used by God. You have to release these things. We can do a whole nother video on purity, but man, I'm telling you, this has been so good, y'all. Oh, I'm just like, I feel like the, the wind of God has just come through me and restored me and refreshed me. I'm serious. This has been so good. I can't wait to see you guys uh, at the marriage retreat. Uh, it's in like, it's in like two weeks or something like that, right? Can't wait. We're going to be there. Well, <clears throat> we just need to. Yeah, lay hands on each other and have a Holy Ghost party. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll just like prostrate right myself. I'll just you. be ready on the floor. <laughs> All right, man. We're going to call it a day. God bless you guys. Yes, Lord. God bless you guys. 
We'll tune yeah, in. Yeah, we probably will not message have Firefighter in her anymore. sermon, and we look forward to seeing you guys again. Anymore. Um, we'll probably end up posting her her sermon in lieu of that. Um, but man, love you guys. God bless y'all. Y'all have a great day. I'm going.